You're watching Protos Games TV. Welcome back to another episode in our War College series where we look at the rules of Warzone Resurrection. And in this episode, we're going to take a look at the actions, something that, in my mind, is another thing that makes Warzone Resurrection cool, unique, and just a game I like to play a lot. For the most part in Warzone Resurrection, every model has two actions. There are going to be some models that have more than two actions. Generally, these are going to be things like monsters or vehicles or things like that. Uh, most of your guys, your heroes, your squad members, squad leaders, whoever they are, are going to have two actions. You can give them a third action by using a resource card, but you cannot use a resource card to give an extra action to a model that already has more than two actions. Now, if a model starts the turn engaged with another model, and that's a term saying that they're within close combat weapon range of each other, then you're going to only have one action. You can burn a card to get another action in that case. Now, there are some other special circumstances, but they're pretty exclusive to certain kinds of troops that can have extra actions, do extra things, stuff like that. Another thing about actions is you cannot use more than one specific action more than once per turn. So when we get into the basic and advanced actions, one of them is a shooting action. You can't use a shooting action twice per turn, but there is an advanced action that you'll see in a minute that allows you to do something similar. We're going to start off with basic actions. And the one thing that's really important to know about basic actions is they cost one action point to perform. The first one we'll look at is move. And with a move action, you're going to obviously be moving your models around the board. And you're going to use this a lot in the game. Some particulars about the move action for Warzone Resurrection are that you're going to measure from base to base or edge of the footprint if the model doesn't have a base. What you're going to use that for are things like tanks and other big models that don't come on a standard base like the rest of your army will. Pivoting counts as movement, so even if you want to turn around, you're going to have to use a move action, so you might as well move, try to get to a better position. How much you move is reduced by the kind of terrain you're moving through, if any, and you can see here, if it's open terrain, there's no reduction. Light terrain, stuff like shallow water and bushes, it's going to reduce you a little bit. Heavy terrain can reduce you a lot. Each of those are only going to reduce you down to a minimum of two inches of movement, so you're always going to get to move at least two inches, but if it's impassable terrain, you don't get to move through it at all, and that's not rocket science. Next up is the engage action, and this is how you're going to initiate hand-to-hand -hand combat. And with an engage action, you can travel up to two times your normal move value, but the amount that you travel in an engage action is reduced by terrain, which you already saw for regular movement, but it's also reduced by the amount that you've already moved for the turn. So you can't charge other than in a straight line unless you have special skills. So let's say you move around a corner and you use five inches of your five inches of movement to move around the corner, and then you end up in line of sight of an enemy and want to engage them. Two times your total movement is 10 inches, but you've already used five, so you can only engage five more inches worth of movement. Now, you can only complete an engage action if that brings you to within close combat weapon range. Some guys have a close combat weapon range of base to base, so you're two times your move value, if that gets you 10, you've got to get into base to base contact with 10 inches of movement. Some guys have a close combat weapon range of two inches, carrying a huge honking sword. Well, then I still use up to, let's say, 10 inches of movement to get as close to you as I can. As long as I'm within two inches, the close combat weapon range, I'm still good to complete the engage action. You have to make engage actions in a straight line, you have to do it within line of sight and to your front facing unless another rule allows you to do otherwise. When you're engaging a model, your enemy can change their facing as appropriate to meet you as you're coming in. You can't engage through terrain gaps or points on the board that are more narrow than the model's bases. And the first close combat attack gets a bonus to their strength and their AVV. AVV is something we'll discuss in a later episode of War College, but that's going to be the negative to the save modifier of vehicles. So for now, just first close combat action you get when you engage gets a bonus to kill somebody, but you must travel at least your unmodified move value to get that attack bonus. So in the example I talked about a minute ago, 
we move five inches and then we engage five inches, we get the bonus. If we move five inches and engage less than five inches, we're still going to hopefully get to attack as long as we have an action left, but we wouldn't get that first close combat attack bonus for engaging. Next up is aiming, and this is something that in my experience you use quite a bit. It's going to give you a plus two to your ranged combat skill. So essentially that's a plus 10% to hit. You get a plus two to the weapon strength, but it only applies to the first shot of a weapon that has a rate of fire over one. So if you have a rate of fire of one, you get plus two to hit and plus two to strength. If you have a rate of fire of two, three, five, fifty, it's going to be plus two, plus two to the first shot that you take. If you use it against a vehicle, it allows you to pick the location hit. That is very important when you're shooting at lightly armored vehicles that have exposed riders like jet bikes and bikes. And you cannot use an aim action with a template ranged attack or a psychic power. Hiding is a basic action that our group hasn't used a whole lot of, but if you're in light cover and you hide, you give the enemy a heavy cover modifier for you to be shot. If you're in heavy cover, it has no impact whatsoever, and you lose it as soon as you take another action. So if, you, if you're, let's say, behind a bush and you shoot and hide, that's the best time to use it because if you hide and then shoot, or you hide and then do something else, it's just going to go away. So if you're already in an advantageous position where you have some cover and you're laying down fire, good to use hide. Our group tends to not use it as much because we're using aim shoot instead of shoot hide for a lot of our shooting actions. And now we get to shooting. As a basic action, you can take a number of shots equal to the rate of fire of the weapon being used. Your target must be in line of sight and in your front facing and the chance to hit your target is reduced by the terrain, how much terrain and what kind of terrain it is between the shooter and the target. We'll get into an entire episode devoted to shooting in the future, but this is where the bulk of all of your actions are going to be. Lots of shooting going on in Warzone Resurrection. And coming in right after shooting are our close combat attacks. To do a close combat attack, you must be engaged with the target model. We talked about engage earlier on. We'll also have a future episode just on close combat and you're going to make a number of attack rolls equal to the rate of attack of the weapon being used. In another upcoming episode, we'll take a detailed look at the morale rules for Wars on Resurrection, but you can use an action to recover from pinning. You can also use an action to regroup from being broken, which are two separate things in the morale section for Wars on Resurrection. And then to round out the basic actions, you can choose to pass. You can choose to do nothing for the turn. You can activate a squad or an individual character and just do nothing to burn one of your activations during the game. And now we'll get into advanced actions. The main thing to remember about advanced actions is these cost two action points to perform. So most guys only have two action points. If you want to do an advanced action, it's going to take both of them to complete it. The first thing you can choose to do with an advanced action is run. This is how you essentially do a move-move action if you could do two basic actions at once. You're going to use the same basic rules as the move action as far as terrain and everything is concerned, but you're going to be able to move up to twice your regular rate. The next thing you could choose to do with an advanced action is rapid fire, and this is not quite the same as doing a shoot-shoot action, which you're not allowed to do. What it does is gives you a plus one to rate of fire and a minus two to your ranged combat skill. So you're getting an extra shot, but you're losing 10% of your chance to hit. You can only do it if your weapon allows. Some weapons do not allow you to increase the rate of fire for any reason whatsoever. Your range is halved for this action, and if you do choose a rapid fire, it does count as doing a shooting action. So even though it takes two actions and that generally taps you out for the turn, you can't do rapid fire for two actions and then use a resource card to get a third action to do a shooting after that. It all counts as shooting. And then you could choose to put models on sentry. What sentry allows you to do is essentially use two actions to save one action to use during the enemy's turn. It can only be used to shoot, to use close combat, to move or dive for cover, which we haven't talked about yet. Uh, you can only do it for up to two in five models in a squad. If you have a squad of five, you can only do it for two. But if you have a squad of two, you can still do it for two. 
To use your sentry action, it requires a leadership test to be successful or you just burn the action and you can't do it. We'll talk about leadership and how that works in a future episode, but basically you're rolling a d20 against your leadership stat and it can only be used between enemy actions except for dive for cover. So let's just say you have two guys on sentry and the enemy shoots at you. After they shoot at you, you can use your sentry action to shoot at them. If you want to use dive for cover though, you can basically interrupt that shooting action to hopefully make your leadership test. And if you do, and you have a piece of terrain that you can jump into, what you end up doing is giving the enemy a negative two to their ranged combat skill to be able to hit you. So that'll be our initial look over the basic and advanced actions in Warzone Resurrection. Uh, we'll go over more of these in future episodes, but also remember there are special actions that can be taken by squads, there are special actions that can be performed only in close combat, and there's stuff action-wise that only vehicles can do, and as time goes on, we'll get into those also. Thanks for watching this episode. We'll see you next time.